So NASA's lawyers fear that all these lawsuits by a certain company, we're really not looking at anyone specific here, they fear that this could delay NASA's Artemis missions and thus could postpone or even jeopardize the entire return to the moon. So is this true? Will this ongoing lawsuit really jeopardize the US's return to the moon? Let's try to find out. I don't think we need to go into detail again about the lawsuit itself, you know, by a certain company founded by this bald guy here 21 years ago. So this company has sued NASA over the Artemis program, NASA's epic return of humans to the moon in this decade. Why did they sue NASA? Well, because the guy was jealous of the other guy here that builds a much more capable, much more gigantic rocket and moon landing system that just outperforms his moon lander in every possible metric. It's cheaper, it's more capable, it can land 20 times more payload on the moon, it is fully reusable, it can carry 10 times more astronauts to the moon in one go, and so on and so forth. The list is really incredibly long. And the consequences for NASA unfortunately are really felt. NASA's moon lander that will actually land people on the moon will be built by SpaceX and this contract is currently on ice until November 1st. Now the chances of Blue Origin winning this lawsuit are actually really low. I'd guess a few percent tops for reasons we talked about in the last video. Therefore, most likely we'll see a continuation of NASA's moon lander development with SpaceX starting again in November. Now actually in reality, SpaceX is of course continuing work on the Starship and Super Heavy and SpaceX has already received $300 million from NASA before the lawsuit started. And since SpaceX will build the Starship anyway, with or without NASA, not much has actually changed. The $300 million are being used for regular Starship development. But of course the rest, the remaining $2.6 billion of the moon lander contract, are currently frozen up. Of course, this would come in handy and be a strong motivation for SpaceX to develop the moon lander Starship in addition to the other versions. The tanker Starship that will be used for orbital refueling, the cargo version that will transport massive amounts of Starlink satellites to orbit and that will land large payloads on the moon and on Mars. The crew version that will carry massive amounts of people to orbit and in the future to Mars. But as we said, the chances of Sue Origin actually winning the lawsuit are really low and so the money floodgates from NASA will open again soon, allowing SpaceX to continue work on the Starship moon lander variant. Should NASA however actually really lose the lawsuit, very unlikely though not impossible, this would mean that the human lander competition would have to be reopened and the companies would be allowed to submit new proposals. But even so, it is extremely unlikely that Blue Origin would actually be able to win the contract. Jeff Bezos said he would add $2 billion of his own money and the initial bid was at $5.9 billion. Okay, so that would bring price down to $3.9 billion. Now that SpaceX already has received $300 million from NASA, they could bid again for only $2.6 billion. So Blue Origin would have to go down an additional $1.3 billion from their already reduced price to even stand a chance. And it's very unlikely that this guy here will agree to that. Because you know his giant mega mansions and super luxury yachts cost quite some money. Why spend it on the future of humanity on the moon when you can buy yourself a $165 million mansion and a $500 million super yacht? Remember that Elon Musk lives in a $50,000 tiny house. So you can already see the priorities and very different characters of those two space entrepreneurs. It is thus extremely unlikely that Blue Origin will be able to match this really low bidding price. Even more so since they are part of the national team and Lockheed Martin and Northrop Grumman are also part of that very same team. And they are surely used to very big paychecks from the government. 
and we don't even have to talk about Dynetics as their bid was even higher than Blue Origins, namely almost 9 billion dollars. They will thus for sure not be able to go down as low as 2.6 billion dollars. So SpaceX would just win the competition again. In that case, it would just have brutally delayed the whole Artemis moon landing endeavor. And then you might say, so what? What's so bad about one or two years of delay? We all didn't believe in any ways that NASA would be able to land on the moon by 2024. Well, some NASA lawyers already laid out their fears and said, quote, what begins as a mere procurement delay all too easily turns into a lack of political support, a budget siphoned off for other efforts and ultimately a shell mission, end quote. Before we continue though, please subscribe to this channel as this would greatly help us to continue making videos on all spaceflight related topics. Thanks a lot in advance. But NASA's administrator Bill Nelson remains very optimistic. He said with regards to these comments by the NASA lawyers that he is very confident about support from Congress for the Artemis program. He is also very optimistic that the Senate will support additional funding for NASA including the human landing system. That program received only a small increase in the House version of a fiscal year 2022 spending bill and was excluded from the reconciliation package despite Nelson requesting $5.4 billion to enable the agency to fund a second lander program alongside the existing award to SpaceX. Nelson really wants the additional money in order to fund the national team moon lander. I personally see Nelson more critically after he split up the Human Spaceflight Directorate into two separate entities. The Human Spaceflight Directorate was previously led by Kathy Leaders, who was mainly responsible for awarding the HLS contract to SpaceX. Now she will only lead the ISS and low Earth orbit part of the Human Spaceflight branch, which was effectively a demotion. So this looks more like a desperate attempt of him to appease to old space. Old space being the old aerospace companies such as Boeing, Lockheed and Northrop Grumman. Maybe he wants to reassure old space that the Senate will allocate 5.4 billion in additional funding to NASA, but we honestly doubt it. All in all it just looks as if the Artemis moon land a part of NASA's return to the moon will be delayed by a few months tops, while SpaceX is currently continuing work on the Starship itself. All SpaceX has done until now is to create a mock-up of the upper segment of the Lunar Starship, which can be seen standing around at Boca Chica. As far as we know, the additional $300 million that SpaceX received weren't yet used for a further Lunar Starship prototype. These funds will be quite possibly used for regular Starship and Super Heavy development. Most of Starship and Super Heavy development is funded by Elon Musk himself with estimated total development costs of up to 10 billion dollars until Starships will be flying regularly to low Earth orbit and beyond. So the major share is being paid by SpaceX or Elon Musk himself anyways, therefore a delay of NASA's Artemis mission will currently not have any impact on the development of Starship and Super Heavy. And we also think that it is absolutely unlikely that Artemis will be shelved, such as NASA's lawyers are fearing, since China's moon program efforts will absolutely ensure continued support from Congress. In the end, it is unwise to leave the moon to China, and the politicians very well know that. A little dose of cold war and voila, you have the continued support of politicians. Isn't that wonderful? So you see, NASA's Artemis program is very probably secured for many more years. Also, we should keep in mind that SpaceX would send people to the moon and build a moon base with a high probability themselves with or without NASA sooner or later. They are already sending private missions to low Earth orbit then a private moon round trip mission with the moon in 2023, so it's really not difficult to imagine that SpaceX would just build 
a private moon base if there is enough interest from companies or individuals that are interested in landing on the moon. And we would dare to say it is pretty likely that there is enough interest. So you see, humanity will return to the moon no matter what happens with NASA and the lawsuit. So then, I hope you enjoyed this episode. All the best from Jishuan and me. And then I would say, on to the future.